Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, we've got an exciting comic haul to share with you all. I've gathered a bunch of incredible titles, some classics and some newer gems, and I can't wait to dive into each one with you. Whether you're looking for recommendations or just want to see what's been catching my eye lately, you're in the right place. So grab your favorite beverage, get comfy, and let's explore these fantastic finds together. First up, we have a little run of the second volume of Aliens, issues 1-4 from 1989. In 1986, James Cameron's Aliens brought to theaters the horrors of a new kind of war against a terrifying enemy. Two years later, Dark Horse Comics released a direct follow-up to the events in the film, and that is what this little run is. Written by Mark Verheiden with art by Dennis Beauvais. Simply beautiful. Next is also a little run written by Michael Heisler and art by Mark Texera, Union Volume 1 Issues 1-4 from 1993. This contains the first appearance of Union as superhero in the Wildstorm universe. The Justice Stone embedded in his chest gives him powers such as energy projection, flight, invulnerability, super speed, and super strength. Born on the planet Aegina, he fought with the Protectorate in a civil war against the Directorate, was then flung to Earth and became Protector of New York. From 1987, Mephisto vs. The Fantastic Four by Al Milgram and John Buscema. Then Mephisto vs. The X Factor. Mephisto vs. The X Men with a great Wolverine on the cover. And lastly from this set, Mephisto vs. The Avengers. The following set is Infinity Wars from 2018, containing a couple of first appearances like the Infinity Warp characters, Miss Kong and Loki's Avengers. As the Infinity Stones come to Earth, so too comes the war for control over them. But none who wield the stones know the truth about the power they contain, or what it would take to bring them to their Yandi. The nature of the universe itself hangs in the balance as we learn the answer to the question on everyone's lips since Infinity Wars Prime. Who is Requiem? These are issues 1-6, to six, written by Jerry Dugan and art by Mike Deodato Jr. Really some fantastic cover art, in my opinion. What do you think? Next is Blade Volume 5, Issue 6, The Jeff Shaw, 1 in 25 incentive variant cover, with an awesome Dracula stabbing blade on the cover. Then we have Batman Volume 3, Issue 144, The Mateo Scalera, 1 in 25 incentive variant cover. And we also have the Alan Qua, 1 in 50 incentive variant cover. Really nice, don't you think? Next up is the Dustin Nguyen cardstock variant cover of Birds of Prey, Volume 5, Issue 6. Then, Batman Superman, World's Finest, Volume 2, Issue 24, 1 in 25 variant. Next is the 1 in 25, Gerardo Sandoval variant cover of Venom Volume 5, Issue 30. A beautiful foil variant cover of Edge of Spider-Verse, Volume 4, Issue 1, with the first appearance of Weapon 8. Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 7, The Annual. Fall of the House of X Issue 2, the regular cover. But also the Emilio Leso, 1 in 25 variant cover of the same issue 2. And the regular cover Dead X-Men Issue 1. The 10th Issue 4, the ES cover. The 10th Volume 4 Evil's Child, Issue 1, the Tower Records variant cover. But also the regular cover of the same Issue 1. And, the Tony Daniel, variant cover 2. Of course I also have the second issue of, the 10th. And the third issue of Evil's Child. And to complete the set of Vum 4, issue number 4. I also got volume 3 of the 10th, Black Embrace issues 1 of 4. Written and art by Tony Daniel. 
This series follows the story of a man who gains extraordinary abilities after being experimented on by a secret government agency. With a unique blend of action, suspense, and drama, The Tenth is a must-read for any comic book enthusiast. Then, we have King in Black, Scream, the R.B. Silva Stormbreakers variant cover. King in Black is a Marvel Comics event penned by Donny Cates and illustrated by Ryan Stegman, which features an epic battle against the fearsome symbiote God Null. As Null descends upon Earth with his army of symbiote dragons, the entire Marvel Universe must rally to confront this existential threat. Central to this storyline is Venom, Eddie Brock, who plays a pivotal role in humanity's defense and faces a deeply personal challenge. This complete set contains issues 1 to 5 and the handbook. Then we have the special edition of Micronauts, published in 1983, and it is notable for several reasons. This comic was a part of a series that reprinted the earlier issues of the original series, which began in 1979, My Birth Year, written by Bill Mantlo and illustrated by Michael Golden. This series was particularly special because it not only reprinted the classic stories, but also included extensive background material. Catwoman, Guardian of Gotham issues 1 and 2 from 1999, written by Doug Monch and artwork by Jim Bayland. I love this cover art. Really beautiful, isn't it? Moon Knight, the complete volume 3 from 1998. The Resurrection War, parts 1 through 4. Written by Doug Monch and illustrated by Tommy Lee Edwards, the series presents Moon Knight, aka Mark Spector, in a struggle against his longtime nemesis, Bushman. This arc is particularly notable as it reintroduces Spectre after being seemingly dead, exploring themes of resurrection and redemption. Issue 103 of the first volume of The Amazing Spider-Man from 1971. Next up is a complete run of House of M Volume 1. Issues 1 through 8 by Brian Michael Bendis from 2005, containing the first appearance of Layla Miller. The Avengers and the X-Men meet to discuss the situation with the Scarlet Witch. Despite all of their best efforts, she still threatens all of reality and need to decide her fate. They travel to Genosha to see the situation in person, only to find themselves trapped in an alternate reality. All but a handful of mutants have lost their powers and abilities, leaving hundreds of thousands without their natural abilities. Some are better able to cope with this change than others. I really love this storyline. What did you think of House of M? Then we have issue number one of volume two of X Terminators. And issue four of volume one from 1989 of X Terminators. Next, an issue I'm going to get slapped. The thousand issue of Amazing Fantasy, with first appearances of Conspiration, The Witch Queen and Ryan, as Rhino. The Luciano Vecchio, foil variant of Scarlet Witch, and Quicksilver issue number one. Decimation, House of M, The Day After from 2006 by Chris Claremont. Secrets of the House of M from 2005. Spinning out of Amazing Spider-Man, Hallow's Eve gets her own series. Janine Godby's world has been blown up several times in her life, but this time, she has a bag of super-powered masks and a chip on her shoulder. She's on the run from the police, but there's someone else after her too. Issues 1 through 5, published in 2023. Written by Erica Schultz, with art by Michael Dowling. The Greg Capullo, one per store virgin variant cover of Wolverine Volume 7 Issue 37. What a great catch. Blade. Issue 1, published by Marvel in 1998. Iron Man Issue 300, the foil variant cover. Ghost Rider, Volume 2, Issue 25 with the first team appearance of The Firm. In the 50th issue of Ghost Rider, the die-cut foil cover. X-23, Deadly Regenesis, the Young Gun Yoon, cover variant. 
Also issue 5 of X-23 Deadly Regenesis, with Kingpin on the cover. Venom, Volume 5, Issue 6 The Miko Swayan Trade Dress Variant Cover, which will look good on my wall. And the Umberto Ramos, Variant Cover of Venom, Issue 35, of Volume 4. The first issue of Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 3, which is the one where Iron Man joins the team. Wait, let's check back on this. This is one of only 6,000 copies, and it has the Certificate of Authenticity included. Berserker Issue 1. The Grassetti, Virgin Exclusive Cover. He Who Fights with Monsters Issue 1. The Virgin Variant Cover. And also Issue 2 of He Who Fights with Monsters, The Virgin Variant Cover. Then, we've got a set of 10 issues of Ascension, published by Top Cow Productions in 1997, a comic series co-created by David Finch and Matt Bat Banning. The series is set in a unique universe where supernatural forces and science fiction elements collide. It follows the story of David Hine, a warrior who wields mystical powers derived from an otherworldly energy known as the Geistrike. The narrative explores themes of power and responsibility as David and his allies confront both terrestrial and cosmic threats. The central plot revolves around David's struggle with the Ascension, a phenomenon tied to the guy strike that grants immense power but also poses significant risks to himself and the world. As David navigates a path filled with dangerous adversaries and complex moral dilemmas, the series delves into his evolution from a mere warrior to a significant player in a larger cosmic balance. Then, we've got the holofoil of Daredevil, the man without fear issue 4. And also, the holofoil cover of Daredevil, the man without fear issue 5. Then, one of my favorite covers, X-23 issue 1, the facsimile. The X-Men vs. The Avengers, published in 1987. The X-Force Annual from 1995, with Cable on the cover. The X-Force Annual of 1996. And, the X-Force Annual of 1997. The Excellent, Volume 2. Issue 2 cover by Mike Allred. X-Men, Hellfire Gala, the Adam Hughes incentive cover, with a nice She-Hulk on the cover. Archangel, issue number 1, published in 1996. Infinity Countdown, Daredevil, the Clayton Crane cover. If you can't buy some expensive first appearances, then the Marvel Milestone Editions series, published by Marvel Comics between 1991 and 1995, is the alternative solution. It features reprints of significant issues from Marvel's history. These editions were created to celebrate key moments and characters from the Marvel Universe, providing new and old fans alike with access to classic stories that may have been difficult to find or expensive to purchase due to their rarity and collector value. Then, we have four issues of The Infinity Entity, published in 2016. Issue number two. Issue number three. And issue number four completing this set. Heroes Reborn, The Return, also a complete set of four issues, from 1997. A mysterious woman named Ashima appears before Franklin Richards, calling herself a celestial. She claims he's created another universe where his parents, Mr. Fantastic and the Invisible Woman, and all the other heroes who died because of Onslaught, exist. The problem is, Franklin doesn't know anything about it. And I also have the same set in its variant covers to continue the storyline. Meanwhile, 
The Hulk is oozing radioactive energy, and the universe appears to be coming apart at the seams. Ashima gives Franklin an ultimatum. It's time to clean up his experiment and put his toys away, but in deference to the great God, he obviously is, she's going to let him. Heroes Reborn, Volume 2 from 2021, Issues 1 through 7, is an event that reimagines the Marvel Universe in a world where the Avengers never formed. Written by Jason Aaron with various artists contributing to different issues, this series explores an alternate reality primarily shaped by the Squadron Supreme, a superhero team analogous to the Justice League, who are the main protectors of Earth. In this reality, characters like Hyperion, Nighthawk, and Power Princess are the central heroes, taking on roles similar to those usually held by Iron Man, Captain America, and Thor in the mainstream Marvel Universe. Then, we have Heroes Return Volume 1, Issue Number 1. And, Heroes Reborn, Marvel Double Action. Then, I was able to snag a couple of issues of Savage Dragon, Volume 2, from 1993. I thought I could start collecting these because I had the opportunity to get some. I had never heard of the title, and I'm always open to read new series. Apparently, Savage Dragon is a comic book series created by Eric Larson, first published by Image Comics in 1992. The series is notable for its continuity, largely written and illustrated by Larson himself. It centers on the adventures of a super-powered humanoid dragon known as the Dragon, who has no memory of his past and is found in a burning field by the Chicago Police Department. The Dragon, real name eventually revealed to be Kerr, decides to join the police force and becomes an officer. The series blends traditional superhero themes with police procedural elements, focusing on dragons' battles against an array of both superpowered and non-superpowered criminals. Over time, the storyline expands to explore dragons' origins, revealing that he is an amnesiac alien from another dimension. Savage Dragon is characterized by its dynamic artwork, long-running story arcs, and a realistic approach to character aging and development. The series has a robust cast of supporting characters and villains, and it often features mature themes, including graphic violence and sexual content. It is also known for engaging with the broader image universe, incorporating other characters and elements into its narrative. To conclude, The Hall also contained a couple of issues of Ecstatics, another series I'm not familiar with, but keen to read. Ecstatics is a comic book series published by Marvel Comics, originating from the series X-Force, before being rebranded in 2002. Created by Peter Milligan and Mike Allred, the series is known for its satirical take on superhero teams and celebrity culture. The series follows a group of mutants who are not just heroes but also celebrities, constantly under the media spotlight. The team, which operates under the public eye, focuses as much on maintaining their fame and public image as they do on their superhero duties. This unusual dynamic leads to internal conflicts, public relations challenges, and the peculiar pressures of fame. That wraps up our rundown of all the amazing titles in today's haul. If you've read any of these books, or if there's one that particularly caught your eye, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed the video, and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.